Hello everybody and welcome back to Tech 5 Production. So, Ryzen 7000 series has been out for quite some time now. And you may be looking out on which AM5 motherboard to get. Usually, however, the MATX versions of motherboards don't get as much coverage as their full-size ATX board. But that's what we'll be focusing on today with this. So the motherboard we'll be going through today would be the Gigabyte B650M Aorus Elite AX, the MATX version of the B650 Aorus Elite AX we have over here. Now why did we choose to go for the MATX version for review is because the MATX form factor size is actually one of the most popular sizes in Malaysia. And we want to cover it more to tell you guys on its feature set and everything. And if you should, as Malaysian says, Hashtag Tambasikit basically top up a bit more to get the ATX size version of this or does it have all of the feature set that you need in an MATX board? So let's dive into it. Now let's talk about the design and aesthetic of this motherboard. And first thing first is that I would just like to say that this board just looks very premium and solid and this is due in part that it carries a lot of design element from the ATX board. Despite being only an MATX version of, of the previous board that we mentioned, it doesn't feel like a cut down version in any way as you also be getting very big VRM heatsink over here as well as full heatsink cover for your M.2 and chipset heatsink over here as well. All this makes it look more premium and very solid to hold in the whole board. Now on the topic of the VRM heatsink, let's go through the VRM of this motherboard as well. With it having a twin 12 plus 2 plus 1 digital phase VRM with 60 amp smart power phases. And all this will be underneath this huge heat sink that has a 6mm heat pipe as well which we'll take out later for you guys in B-roll for you to see. Now along with that, this motherboard also has an 8 layer 2x copper PCB built with it. So all this means that you can be very confident in using even very high-end processors such as the Ryzen 9 7950X on it or even the soon to be released Ryzen 9 7950X 3D that is coming soon. This board will be able to handle it without much problem. Oh, and on the topic of the X3D variant of processor, do remember to follow and stay subscribed to us as we try to get our hands on those processors as well to let you guys see the difference of it, especially in gaming between the current processors. Now, let's move on a bit to the side over here to talk about the memory specification of this motherboard. With this motherboard having four DDR5 DIMM slot, each of them supporting up to 32 gigabytes of memory, meaning that it can, this motherboard is able to support up to 128 gigs of DDR5 memory with memory speed of up to 5200 mega transfer per second when they're not overclocked and up to 6666 mega transfer per second when they're overclocked or with Expo enabled for this motherboard. Okay, now moving down a bit to the PCIe area of this motherboard that's over here. There's two full-size PCIe lane for this motherboard with the top slot over here being the main lane of PCIe Gen 4 by 16 lane. Perfect for any graphic card that's in the market right now. And it's very nice that the main slot over here for your graphic card also have an extension for your latch or lock over here, allowing you to have an easier time taking out your graphic card. Now this is especially good on an MATX size motherboard as usually with an MATX size casing, it'll be rather tight on the inside. So it's nice that an extension over here is present as well as a little two stopper over here so that the extension of this PCIe lock doesn't hit anything. Very nice touch over here and for the bottom lane of this motherboard you'll be running on a PCIe Gen 4 as well and it's a x16 physical lane however it's only running on x4 electrically so you won't be able to run SLI or NVLink setup on this motherboard but then again Nvidia doesn't really support dual graphic card anymore so I would say you won't be losing out on much 
Now on the same area around the PCIe area, we'll be talking about the storage next for this motherboard, which is right below the main PCIe lane. And over here, you can see that there's the M.2 heatsink over here, which Gigabyte calls it the thermal guard. And there are two M.2 slots over here, which we'll show in B-roll, with the top slot over here being a PCIe Gen 5 by 4 M.2 lane, perfect for any upcoming PCIe Gen 5 M.2 SSD that's coming up. And the bottom lane over here will be running on the M.2 that's PCIe Gen 4 by 4. Still very good for all of the M.2 that are out in the market today. Now, besides M.2 support, we'll be talking about the older SATA support from this motherboard as well. And with this motherboard, it'll have four SATA 3 supported slot over here. And the nice thing about this SATA slot is that they won't be utilizing the PCIe lanes on the other lanes. So meaning that what you see is what you get, and you can utilize all of the M.2 and SATA slot, and they won't be utilizing any other PCIe lanes on this motherboard which is great. Now moving on from the SATA slots over here, let's shift it back to the back slot of the motherboard over here and talk about a bit of its rear I.O. Starting off with the top one over here, which is the Q-Flash or BIOS flashback button for this motherboard. A very nice to have feature, especially on the AM5 platform as AMD tend to support their platform a lot longer. So this means that you can be buying this motherboard now and few years down the line when Ryzen 8000 or 9000 come out and you don't have the supported CPU to update to that BIOS, you can easily just use this Q flash or BIOS flashback button to update to the newest BIOS to support those motherboards. So great to see it here on this motherboard. So the next thing we'll be talking about will be the right below the BIOS flashback button, which is the two Wi-Fi antenna. And we'll be talking about the wireless connectivity for this motherboard. Now this wireless connectivity on this motherboard is rather unique as there are actually two different chipset for this motherboard. With the first one being at the revision 1.0 of the motherboard, which is the one we have here. The revision 1.0 motherboard will be utilizing chipset from AMD's 6E, Wi-Fi 6E, which uses the chipset RZ616. So you have Wi-Fi 6E as well, and it'll be utilizing Bluetooth 5.0. Whereas for the newer revision of revision 1.1, you'll instead be using Intel's AX210 Wi-Fi 6E, same 6E as well, but it's by Intel, and then the Bluetooth would be 5.3 instead of 5.2. So if this is something important to you for the Bluetooth version, do take note on which revision of the motherboard you'll be getting. Now on the topic of connectivity, if you're someone who's a bit more into the classics and you prefer to use a LAN port, there it there is a LAN port over here which is using a Realtek 2.5 gigabits Ethernet uh, chipset over here, meaning it will be able to support LAN speed of up to 2.5 gigabits per second. Okay, moving back upwards to near the USB area, but before we begin on the USB, why not we take a look at the display output options for this motherboard as the current generation of Ryzen 7000 series of processor all comes with integrated graphics. So for this motherboard, it will come with one display port as well as one HDMI over here. With the display port over here being a display port 1.4, allowing it to support 4K 144Hz with data stream compression and HDMI over here being a HDMI 2.0 supporting 4K 120Hz with subsampling, 420 subsampling. And now let's move back to the USB. At the top over here, you'll find four standard USB 2.0, perfect for older things such as mouse, keyboard, and speakers. And if we move down a bit more, you'll find five USB 3.2 Gen 1 over here, which are color-coded blue. And right next to it will be a USB Type-C, which is a Gen 3.2. So this one has a support of 10 gigabits per second for this Type-C. And right below the USB 3.2 Gen 1, you will find two more USB 3.2 Gen 2, which are color-coded red, which should have similar speed to the USB Type-C, but these are Type-A instead. And finally, let's talk about the audio around this motherboard. We did having your standard array of 3.5 millimeter jack, one of them being line out for your speaker, another one being mic for your mic. And finally, you have the classic SPDIF out or Sony Philips digital interface for anyone who's wanting to use it, this motherboard for their home theater system. And all this audio will be powered by the Realtek ALC897 chipset. And finally, Let's go over all of the pins and headers of the Gigabyte B650M Aorus Elite. 
Starting off with the power headers, there will be a 8 pin power connector at the top left of this motherboard, so no extra pin headers needed from your power supply. And there's a 24 pin power connector for your motherboard. Then for fan headers, there will be 6 PWM fan headers, 2 at the top, mainly for your CPU cooling fans, 1 at the right side, and 3 more will be at the bottom. As for RGB and ARGB headers, there will be 3 RGB headers and 2 ARGB headers on this motherboard. Although personally, I would prefer to have 3 ARGB headers with 2 RGB headers instead. But this is still plenty enough for most setup, especially if it's only going for an MATX build. As for internal USB headers, there will be a USB 3.2 Gen 2 by 2 Type-C header at the right side, which means this will actually have a higher bandwidth or speed than the rear Type-C. One USB 3.2 Gen 1 and two USB 2.0 front panel header can be found at the bottom of the motherboard. The bottom left of the motherboard will have its front audio header like most board, along with front panel connection at the bottom right of the motherboard. Now a few extra useful internal connectors or headers are found on the B650M Aorus Elite as well would be the 5 pin connector over here which says THB underscore U4. So I found out that this was actually used for Gigabyte's own add-in card, such as the GC Titan Ridge, which Gigabyte uses their own proprietary 5-pin connectors to enable Thunderbolt connections on their motherboard. And the next nice feature that I discovered on this motherboard would be the reset header and button at the side of this motherboard. Great for anyone that's using a test bench on their setup to try out different things and configuration. But it would be nice as well if Gigabyte managed to cram in a power button right next to the reset button as well. But this is already a nice thing to have. And finally, the LED troubleshooting light will be right next to the reset button. Overall, this board is great. With it having feature set and overall appearance that's very near to the ATX counterpart of this board, with it having even the same chipset of audio, LAN and even Wi-Fi chipset as the ATX counterpart. So you really won't be losing too much from the ATX motherboard. Where the only difference with it from what we've seen so far is that the ATX version of this motherboard does have an extra M.2 slot instead of just two likely due to the size limitation of this motherboard. And because of it being an MATX size motherboard, which means it's slightly smaller, the cost of it is also slightly cheaper, being priced at only 1,280 ringgit. And that's all from us for this review. We hope you enjoy this video and find it informative. Be sure to stay subscribed and follow to us at our respective social media. As again, we try our best to get you guys more video reviews on the world of PC components. See you guys next time!